Hello, I am Drag, and in this video, I am drawing my Dias de los Muertos picture for the Javier region, but in the region, they call it the Festival of Ghosts. That is a working title, so it's liable to change at any point. But uh, what happens at this festival, um, right now I believe the characters are in Sky Harbor, so what happens is uh, like, you know, the ghosts of that, of any given town during this time, when it happens, they'll like, you know, get all antsy. They're just happy to be celebrated, and they, uh, they do stuff, and then like, the people give them the treats that they bought. Like, a really common thing that shows up is the sugar skulls. And that's actually a funny thing, because, uh, in my Spanish class, when I took it, the sugar skulls, like, my teacher was saying how long they actually took to make, like, they had to, like, stay outside for like, I mean you had to like let them dry and harden and that took like three days. And it's just like, it's just for this like little candy skull. I, I still have yet to try one. I want to, but I don't know where to go. Despite, you know, where I live. In this region, they have this festival. And in this festival, they will like celebrate the ghosts in whatever town they're in. I think it's, it's like a regional thing. Like the whole region celebrates it. It has a very heavy, Mexican theme this region and it takes place in the desert So a lot of the Pokemon that are native to that region have evolved their forms have changed to adapt to that Some of them have evolved for the convenience of the people around them Like that little Chimeco in the back it uh is actually you can't find it in the region And that's like you can't find it, but it has a regional variant. That's like a lot of I did that with a lot of Pokemon in this region, and I'm not really sure why. I, just, I guess I just thought that would be funny. But uh, that Chimeco in the back, what it does, it's like, it's like basically a traveling air conditioner. And because of its ability, Misty Veil, I think that's what I'm gonna call it, it just like cools down the area around it. That's it. It just makes it colder. So, in this, uh, the, the history, like what, what inspired me to make this? entire region. I believe it was a 2014, 2013-2014 time. Like, I was, uh, I was watching these, uh, what's it, what do they call them, those, uh, those team sweep videos, like, yeah, yeah, I was one of those people, I watched those, uh, it was terrible, like, oh, go watch this level one Magikarp sweep a whole team of, like, 100 legendaries with their hacked Pokemon. Like, I was watching it, and that this, um, one of the other people, like, one of the people, they had, like, a, a shiny Jirachi, which I know was hacked, because at the time, there were no events where a shiny Jirachi was distributed, and, like, something, something just irked me about that, that just, just, like, the fact of how many people just, like, glorified shinies. And, like, I don't really care about it now, but it was just something that was like, oh my god, like, enough with the shinies. Like, I don't care. Like, people don't care. These are just, they're just Pokemon with a, with a different color. Like, your Pokemon still sucks. It's just a different color. <laughs> what most people would do in that situation is not use shinies, but I made a whole region where all the Pokemon have variants that um, make the Pokemon in the Pokemon universe look so different from what they normally look like compared to the other regions that like the people native to this region they're just like oh oh you have a shiny cool okay which is funny because that's actually how the pokemon anime started treating shinies too like there was this one chick in pokemon xyz i think and she had this like shiny dragon air it was purple and like nobody gave t like a second thought about it they're like oh wow her dragon air hey oh, wow she's uh, they talked more about the trainer, or the coordinator, whatever they do in showcases. They talked more about her than they did like her Dragonair being shiny versus when Ash got that shiny Noctowl and everyone was like, oh wow, that Noctowl is so pretty. Ugh, disgusting. Anyway, that's why I try to make the Pokemon look different, but as I've mellowed out, like, like there's still a bunch of regional variants, like the ghost Pokemon. I think some of their variants will stick. Some Pokemon just like, you know, like Crows, Murkrow line, they look, they look relatively unchanged because that's, Crows are kind of universal things. That's, that's that aspect of it. Other aspects of the region are ancient Pokemon. 
which are incredibly powerful versions of what you would call a quote-unquote common Pokemon. There are currently 12 discovered in the region. However, they uh, normally keep to themselves unless called upon to act to, to defend the townspeople against the legendary, the roaming legendary Pokemon, which is actually kind of a nuisance to the people of the region because it straight up like tortures them for it does it for the lols. It is a Pokemon that exists purely for trolling. So in this in this lore, in the lore that I made, the the Pokemon, the ancient Pokemon, they were created when the two poke when when the two legendaries were um going like neck and neck and then because of the, the mischievous one, because of its ability, it uh it, it got the upper hand and like it sealed away the other legendary. And before it was like permanently sealed away or whatever, it like released its power that like, and it like granted like these extra powers and abilities to these new Pokemon and to these random, like random 12 Pokemon. And uh, those Pokemon like guard that specific area. And that's sort of, like I'm still trying to figure like all of it out, but I believe that that's why a lot of the Pokemon look the way that they do as far as like some of the customs so like the reason why all right uh, let's say Altaria the reason why Altaria in this specific region look different is because there is an ancient Altaria because of course there is because I love Altaria because of that like um it create like its offspring like created new off like, like it, it sort of passed on that power, but Altaria in this region aren't like mega strong. They're like, they're just regular Altaria. They're just giant and apex predators. That's one aspect that changed them was the ancient Altaria. And with the, with, with that, they sort of got stronger, I guess. There's also like other ancient Pokemon that are not regulars, like um, the legendary birds, like Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres. They, um, they have their own ancient forms in this region. The, um, if you see me drawing a Mexican flag in the Javio pictures, it's not a brown eagle on it. It's a um, it's a Zapdos. It's the regional variant of that Zapdos, which it's just it's it's a Thunderbird. I really like it. I really like the way it look. It came to me in a dream, and they were sealed away too because they're mischief makers. It's really. And Moltres, of course, is the strongest one because in most iterations, I think, I think, I think they normally make Moltres like the most dangerous one out of the three. Articuno freezes you, Zapdos saps you. Moltres, like, it normally keeps to itself, but like, whenever it does show up, it's like really dangerous, I think. And that's what I think. So, where the characters are now is they're in a town called Sky Harbor, or, or maybe a city, I don't know. They're in a place called Sky Harbor, which is the place that hosts Battle Fest on alternating years. Trainers can attend Battle Fest if they've collected 10 badges. And it's basically just a festival where people are just, you know. I mean, it's not Battle Fest in the picture. It's the Festival of Ghosts working title. Um, what they do, like, during Battle Fest, like, trainers will just, like, you know, just, like, be walking around, like, oh, hey, are you a trainer? Cause like it's not just trainers that that are there. It's like regular people who just like want to see Pokemon battles, and uh, they'll be like, "Oh yeah, yeah, I'm a Pokemon trainer. You want to battle?" I'm like, yeah, sure. And then like the referee just sort of comes out of nowhere, <laughs> kind of like in Metabots. Like no matter what, <laughs> no matter where they were, that referee just came out of nowhere, and he's just like, "All right, it's time to meta battle or whatever." Yeah, that show was a hoot. But that's sort of what happens, and, like, I guess, because trainers get in for free, so I guess it'd be hosted by the incredibly wealthy people of that area, but also the ticket sales from non-trainers. But in order to get badges to qualify for it, you have to, you know, go around to ten respective cities and uh, fulfill the rights working title of whatever gym leader equivalent, I'm calling them right runners right now, right, R-I-T-E, I actually looked up the definition of that word, it's like 
a religious ceremony, but I don't think it's gonna be, like, there's not really gonna be any religious aspects of this region other than Dia de los Muertos thing. I know there's gonna be some aspects of it, because, like, there, there always are, because religion kind of shapes everything. So, they have to, like, fulfill the right in order to, uh, get the badge, and, you know, Right now, I currently have, I believe, 12 towns where you collect, where like, where you get these rights, or like, where you go through these rights or trials, and you get the badge, and like, it grants you access to places. The oases areas, I do not think. There are three oases in this region, and I do not believe they have those, but uh, I can get more into that when I discover more about the region. It's, I'm not gonna lie, making a region is very fun. I do recommend it if you have the time because it is a lot of work. It is a lot of studying because that's what you have to do when you want to make things accurate. Ugh, there's a lot of asking people stuff like, how does this work? Why do they do this? And it's not just like you can't just ask one person, you have to ask multiple people. But you have to, uh, you have to actually talk to people. And we all know how much artists hate talking to people, so. Yeah. Contests were actually a fun thing that I came up with because, I mean, I didn't come, you know what I mean, w was a fun story plot because when I, w when I started the story, the guy was really just like creating his Pokemon dream team, you know, like, you know, like, yeah, the Pokemon that he wanted the most on his team. And what it actually turned into was he became, like, he became a Pokemon coordinator. And that's sort of how, like, the story went on. And, you know, like, the whole friendship BS and whatnot. Like, the whole, oh, you know what? Your family was right here the whole time. I mean, he already had a fit. <laughs> what happened was he developed a team that he had no intention of developing, which is kind of what happens in almost every Pokemon game I play. The reason why he has a Murkrow is because... I liked Murkrow's sprite in the Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver games, and I was like, all right, I caught it, and it became like one of the best Pokemon I've ever had. I evolved it into a Honchkrow, which is actually funny because in the story, like where where the characters are now, it actually should be a Honchkrow because they do not make it to Sky Harbor before his Murkrow evolves. So that is an interesting continuity error that I did that I'm not going to fix because I think a conch crow would be a bit too distracting in this picture. So I, I, I always kind of found the idea of like Pokemon contests a bit more interesting than actual like Pokemon gym battles and whatnot. But like I did, I did incorporate I did incorporate that into the region because people like gym battles. So in the in this particular version of the story, they don't really focus so much on uh, gym battles, but contests. Because I just think that there's more there, and I really, I really don't like how the how they just sort of like did away with the contests in the show. Because honestly, those were more interesting. They it showed like it was more world building, I guess. I guess that's what I liked about it. It was world building. The contests in the games, though, are just complete trash. Like, all you really do is just, like, do random attacks in a sequence. It's not really as interesting, but in the show, I feel like they really, they really had something there. Which is really disappointing that they just kind of threw them away, placed them with those showcases. Which, I mean, I guess I like those too, but I just didn't feel like they had the same oomph. So, yeah. Thank you for watching and hopefully listening to me ramble on about... I have no idea because I only have a vague outline of what to talk about. So, yeah. If you have not watched that the first video where I was doing line art, I would recommend watching that. Have some spoopy ghost music going on in there and yeah bye